do you guys remember the first day of seventh grade for you? You would have been probably about 12 or 13 years old. For me, it wasn't long before that that popularity and fitting in worked its way onto my radar. And I walked into my first day of seventh grade thinking, this is going to be my year. This is going to be the year I get noticed. I make more friends. This is going to be the year I finally get the attention of boys. And this will be the year that I shed the invisibility cloak, stop being an outcast. And then I walked into my first classroom, and my teacher called me to the front of the room, and she goes, you've been reassigned, so you need to report to this class. And I didn't think much of it, happily headed off to my next classroom. And when I got there, I was the last to arrive, and I walk in, and it's a class of about 10 to 12 kids, and they're all like the misfits of the school. I mean, these are the kids that have even less friends than I do. Some of the kids had been in some pretty serious trouble. And I'm looking at the teacher standing at the board with a look on his face like, what did I do to be the guy assigned to this class? And he said, Amy, right? And I was like, yep. And he said, take a seat. And then he said, my name is Mr. Parker. You guys will be in my class all day. I will teach you every subject. I will give you assignments. You will work at your own pace. And when everyone's done with the assignment, we'll move on. I expect you to behave, and I expect you to be quiet. And oh yeah, we're going to do some field trips. So here are some forms to take home and have your parents sign and bring back. Now, I didn't know at the time exactly what had happened, but I found out shortly after. The school administrators had decided to put together a special class of all the at-risk kids in the school. So they looked at our backgrounds and our behavior and our families, and they decided we needed this special class. We were the kids that they wanted to keep a closer eye on. We were the kids they wanted to keep out of trouble. But most importantly, we were the kids they wanted to keep away from the general student population. We even had our own lunch period that was shared with nobody else. So for most kids in the class, like I said, they had been in some trouble. Some kids were medicated, some were pretty unresponsive. For me, I don't think they actually looked at me at all. Like they didn't take into account my grades up to that point, which had all been A's and B's. They didn't look at the few friends I did have, which were pretty good kids who weren't in any trouble. They didn't look at my behavior. I was actually really quiet, really shy, usually a teacher favorite, but I hadn't been in any trouble myself either. What they looked at was they looked at my older brother, who had probably one of the thickest files of bad behavior in the school files. They looked at his juvenile record. They looked at his drug use. They looked at my family. They knew that my mom had left when I was two. They knew that my dad was raising us. They knew that my dad had only gone as far as the eighth grade in high school before he dropped out, and that he was a truck driver, which meant he was gone most of the time, not even really around to take care of us, weeks at a time in some cases. They knew I had been abused by a caretaker. They looked at the rest of my family, and they saw all the prevalent commonalities among them, the drug use, the trailer parks, the teenage pregnancy, the jail time, the poverty, the high school dropouts. They looked at my sad little trailer park that I lived in, and they knew that I had been the kid sent home from school a few times already because I was the kid with lice. So they looked at all of that, and they decided that my future was pretty determined, that I wasn't going anywhere either. Might as well put me in this special class since I needed to learn how to shop for groceries more than I needed to learn how to do algebra. So that year, well, that first semester, I basically spent every day completing my assignment really quickly, always the first to do so, and then playing chess with Mr. Parker. He actually taught me to play chess that year, and we played chess nearly every day, except for the days we were at the grocery store and learning how to read price tags. No joke, we had a field trip to learn to read price tags. So at the end of the semester, Mr. Parker went to the school board and said, you really should put her back in regular school. And they said, no. (laughs) So we spent another semester playing chess. And then at the end of the year, thankfully, Mr. Parker went back to them again and insisted she's not displaying at-risk behaviors. You really need to put her back in school. She's a good student. And they did. And that's when I went back to regular school. But I learned two things that year. Real weird, I guess I decided two things that year. One was never again did I want anyone else to be in charge of my fate. I wanted to be in control of that. And two, I was going to continue on my path to having a different life than the one I was currently living. I was going to show all of those people who thought I belonged in that class that anyone can create the life they want regardless of the life they're born into. 